All right, what's up? I'm back on the Webflow forums and got an interesting question. Cam Putty wants to um, trigger a button click when a form is submit and the form exists within an embedded file from uh, HubSpot in an iframe. So he says, I set up this example to paint a picture of what I'm trying to achieve. I have a embed HubSpot form and want to trigger action on submit of the form. Uh, for this example, you can have it click the change color button once the form is submitted. And let's see, he gave us a link to go to, which I already have open here, but I'll just open it here. And I just gave him some quick jQuery, but it turns out I was wrong. So sorry about that, Cam Putty. I should have done a little bit more uh, trouble or testing, the importance of testing. So some of my code is up here, but I'll, I'll show you down in the console kind of my thought process. So it turns out if you want to think you can access things in the form or in the iframe like you normally would, uh, let's just say const a equals document dot query selector. And now let's say I inspect. So this thing has a class of uh, HS button, which you can see right here. This is a combo cl uh, class of primary and large as well, but we just want to pull from HS button. So let's see if I put dot hs button and I hit enter. It actually returns the first time, which is good. Uh, let's see if I now try to get this change color button, which has an ID of button two. It's b equals document dot query selector button two. Now b returns null, which is is pretty weird, right? Like definitely would expect to be able to select that. You can go into inspector even and store as a global variable, and then you can get it there via temp one, but that doesn't really work for our use case because we actually want to run the code. We're not gonna go in and store as a global variable every time. So why can't we select that after selecting this? Another thing now, if I say, let's see, const c equals, and I just copy this. Now, if I try to access C, I'm getting null returned. Uh, just really weird that I wouldn't be able to use this again. So it turns out that because we have multiple iframes in here, so you have your first iframe here, and you see it gets another document. So when I'm writing this document.query selector, I'm accessing different objects. And then down here, we have another iframe for this open sandbox that he built. You could do something like, uh, let me, I'm gonna refresh the page const frames equals document dot query selector all and we'll just select for um, iframe. Now frames returns a node list of two. And within each of those, let's say the first one, now this is starting to look familiar when we're doing selector. These should have a content document which is gonna have all of the API and the stuff that we're used to seeing within our normal. Uh, so the whole DOM tree for the iframe lives in here, which is a long ways to say that the way we should be approaching this problem is something more like uh, what I have up here. So I'm gonna actually change, we don't need to get both the frames, it's kind of useless. So what I'll say is const uh, sub button equals document dot query selector and let's get the this iframe actually comes with a an ID this one from HubSpot that he's using so ID HS form iframe zero so we'll use that to select that element I'll go back to my sources here so I'm right here let me just add some returns to make these uh, separated so now the submit button equals document query selector just form iframe zero. And so let's just bring this down into console because we can kind of do it live here. Uh, dot. See, it's returning null here. So again, it's it's having an issue. Let me refresh the page. Hmm. Well, I'm running into problems. What if I just put iframe here? 
so that gets it. Let's see if we put this in here. I'm expecting it to show up in the live section down here. No. How unfortunate. Oh, it's because I'm not putting the uh, the ID. It needs this. So let's, now I'll show you. And there we go. Now we're able to get it because we're actually selecting properly via the ID field. So we have that, but within that we want to get the content document. So I'm just going to do that again. Content document. And now it's like saying document dot query selector. Dot query selector. And we want to get that HS button. And I'm putting the dot because I'm selecting by class now. And there we go. And now we have the button. So I'm just going to take this whole thing and put it here because I know that works now. And I'm going to delete this. And I want to build a click event now. So what I'm going to do is I will say document dot add event listener. And I want to do this on click. And when I click, this is a callback function, so it means when uh, this is clicked, and actually this should not be document, because we're not clicking on the document. We want it when we click on the submit button. So sub button there. So when we're adding an event listener to sub button, when we click, we're going to run this function. And that function will have an event, and we're going to prevent default, and all that what that does is it prevents the form from actually submitting and then we will say console.log click and we will say color button dot click so what we would expect is when this runs is that this watch my color change see if I click it here we'll, we'll change color so let's refresh and then I'm gonna run this with command enter and when I click now that changes and we got in the console log click. So everything's good there. And I believe that should really take care of the use case. You can see we uh, worked through a little bit. I tried selecting by one of these um, data attributes here that also was giving me the same issues. And then I kind of explored the DOM structure a bit more and found out, okay, we have multiple documents going on in here and that's probably when I'm accessing document that's probably what's giving us the problem I gave him kind of the first version I was like oh there's probably some improvements we can make and this was the final code uh, I recommended on the load this will wait for the iframe elements to load as well so that's how you access elements within an iframe that are inside of your uh, your DOM hope that helps and yep that's it